Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is a story about what if Devil Fruit Naruto joins Luffy Harem. Before I start, please support for more amazing content and do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This is written by Angel Philendeman and link in the description and support writer. Let's start the video. Prologue. Naruto laid on his back panting as he looked up at the black sky above him, a single tear rolled down his cheek as three bodies laid on the ground around him. One being his former teammate and friend Sasuke Chiha and the other two his triplet brother and sister. He had taken their lives in the valley of the end. But they placed all their hate onto the wrong people and wouldn't take account for their own actions and wanted to further place their hatred and blame on Naruto and the village that had ignored their brother growing up and worshipped the ground they walked on. While Naruto was treated like an outsider in his own home and village. His siblings had been respected and seen as heroes their late father had wished for. Even their mother had turned her back on Naruto. Focusing all her time and energy on the two she believed would be the ones to carry their clan's names into glory. Naruto chuckled dryly. Boy was she wrong. He spoke out loud as he slowly began to push himself off the ground. Hey it slowly kit. Your new arm is slowly forming and will take about another hour or so. But this arm will appear to look like mine. I'm sorry I couldn't give you another human arm said Kurama within the now open seal inside Naruto. Don't sweat it Kurama. I know you're going through a lot as well with getting your yin and yang back and making yourself whole once more. Said Naruto as he looked down at his new arm. I might have to bandage it so no one freaks out. He said as an afterthought. It will be for the best. Those monkeys will only freak out even more once they see it. Said Kurama as he was still unsure about allowing the boy to return to the village full of fools. I know. Said Naruto as he sat up for a while quietly. No one was coming and it was giving him the time he needed to think. Hey Kurama. He began to speak. Yeah kid. What's on your mind? Questioned Kurama as he knew something had been waiting on the boy's mind for a while. Even before this two siblings had ran off with the stupid Acha. I want to leave. I want to leave this island and see the world. Screw being hokage to these people. I want to find a new dream and have some fun. I'm only 16 and I have done so much and it has always been for the others. To save my brother and sister. To save Sasuke. But now I want to live my own life. Said Naruto as he slowly stood up and dropped his forehead protector to the ground. This is the end. I will never return to this place. Mom can have another kid and try to rebuild the clan. But I'm done. I'm no longer going to be her or the other's puppet for when the two golden children are no longer around. He said as he slowly jumped onto the river and began walking. He knew it fed into the east blue and maybe with Karama's help. He can walk to a nearby island and go from there. Several hours later in the valley of the end. Ashina, Kakashi, and Tsunade come running to where they had felt the powerful chakra. They have to be alright. Cried Kashina as she was worried for her children. I don't give a damn about those other brats. I only hope Naruto is alright. Growled out Tsunade as tears threatened to roll down her cheeks. Kakashi kept quiet as he could not feel any more chakra coming from there. His fears was they all had died in the battle. As the three landed before the once beautiful valley with the former statues of the village leader and head of the Achiha clan. There was only three bodies and an arm with a forehead protector laying on it. Kashina ran to her two children crying as she looked to the arm, as the pug sniffed it and looked back at the silver hair man. It belongs to Naruto. Said Pakin as the small pug let out a growl. I don't smell anything else as he looks to the river. No cried Tsunade as her hands moved to cover her mouth. I've lost him as well. She whispered with tears rolling down her cheeks as she took the forehead protector that was left on the arm. Going Mary. Luffy sits on the figurehead of his ship looking out to see as Zoro sat right under him watching over his captain like a hawk. Zoro. I see someone standing in the middle of the sea. Said Luffy as he turned his head to look down at his first mate. Zoro opened an eye and looked up at Luffy. What are you talking about? He questioned as he yawned slowly standing up to look at where his captain was looking. His eyes widened as a man with blonde hair stood before them just a few hundred feet away from them. From the crow's nest. There is a man on the water. Yelled Yusuf as Nami and Sanji both came out of the lounge to see what was happening. Let's help him. Said Luffy as they sailed closer. The blonde looked up at the ship with the strange goat's head with a raven hair boy sitting on it. Hey, take the rope ladder. Called a man with green hair as a man with blonde hair stood next to him. Without even thinking about it Naruto jumped onto the ship from where he stood. I guess I got lucky for I'm so trier. He thought to himself as he blinked his eyes and smiled at the crew that saved him from passing out in the middle of the east blue. But before he could say anything his eyes rolled into the back of his head and he fell forward where Luffy caught the teenage boy in his arms. Looks like he hasn't had any sleep in a few days, nor does it look like he has eaten. Said Luffy to his crew. Sanji make him something to eat for when he wakes up. Zoro help me carry him inside and Nami get him a bedmate. 
he gave out orders to his crew. Inside of Naruto's mindscape. Naruto appears before Kurama. I am grateful for them saving me. He told his best friend and brother. They are different and the one that caught you is something special. He is strong. Said Kurama as he used his tails to pull his kit to him to rest. Yeah. I got that feeling as well. Naruto agreed as passed out. With Luffy. I wonder if he will be willing to join my crew. I can tell he is pretty strong. Said Luffy as he looks at Zoro who hasn't left his side since the newcomer had been brought on board. Who knows. But you're not wrong. He is pretty strong. Said Zoro as he studies the teenage boy who sleeps in the bed that normally Nami sleeps in. Sanji comes walking into the room with a tray with a bowl of broth and some water for the boy to drink once he awoke. I think this will be best for him now. For I don't know how long he hasn't eaten and anything heavy might make him sick. He said as he placed the tray down next to Naruto's head as he had been sleeping now for about a day. Luffy nodded his head. Yeah I think you're right. He said as he poked the boy's cheek as he now noticed the whiskers on the blonde's face. Hey, he has whiskers on his face. Naruto slowly began waking up as Luffy was feeling his cheek. You know it's rude to feel someone's face without asking. He told the captain of the ship. Well I was cleaning off your face with this wet cloth and I noticed you have whiskers. Said Luffy as he grins at the blonde. Naruto lets out a sigh and slowly pushes himself up now sitting. I see. He said looking around as he sees the same blonde and green hair man from earlier looking at him. Hello. He tells them. There is a broth and water for you. For I don't know how long your last meal was. Said the blonde as he lit a cigarette. Naruto nodded his head to this. Thanks. It's been about two weeks since I have eaten and solider pills are starting to make me sick. He told the blonde as the one with raven hair places the tray on his lap. What are solider pills? Asked the raven hair teen. Naruto looks at him. They are pills that keep you full and keep you from eating for a while. But a normal person can only use those pills for a couple days. But I'm not normal. He said as he saw the bandages came off of his arm. That sucks. Said Luffy making a face. Hey, give me one of those pills so I can feed it to him. Said the Sanji as his eyes lit up with hope. Naruto chuckled. Maybe later. I still need to see if I have any and if I am going to need them. For I have no idea who you are and where we are. He told them. Luffy grins. You're on our ship the Going Merry. We're pirates. I'm Monkey D. Luffy and I'm the captain of the Straw Hat Pirates. These two are part of my crew. He said pointing to the two men. I am Murano as Oro, first mate and swordsman of the crew. Said Zoro. I am Sanji. The chief of the Straw Hat Pirates. Said Sanji. They're pirates. Questioned Naruto with shock. Yeah. I wanted to be free and the freest man was the former pirate king. So I am going to be the king of all pirates. Said Luffy with a grin. We go on adventures and help people along the way if the need arises and if are able to. He said with the same grin. Oh. Well I am Yuzumaki Naruto. Former shinobi of the Hidden Leaf. I quiet after I won our freaking war and how I left. Everyone thinks I'm dead. Said Naruto as he finished his meal. Cool. Join my crew. Said Luffy with stars in his eyes. Naruto blinks. Are you sure? He asked Luffy. Yeah. I think it's cool you're a ninja and it will be fun and you'll be free as part of my crew. Said Luffy. Luffy? Yelled a female voice from the doorway. Everyone turned to look at the girl standing at the door. Yeah Nami what's wrong? Questioned Luffy looking at the girl with red hair. Look at this. Said Nami now holding a bounty poster in her hands. It was a close-up photo of Luffy waving at the camera, smiling his famous D smile. Well shit. He now has a bounty of 60 million berries for kicking Arlong's ass. Said Zora laughing. Oh wow. Said Luffy as his arm stretched over to Nami and took the poster from her. Naruto's eyes widen. You have a bloodline. He questioned with shock in his voice. Everyone look at him. No I ate a devil fruit and I'm now a rubber man. Said Luffy pulling his cheek as if it wasn't nothing special. Hid in the world outside of the elemental islands. There are fruits known as devil fruits that are like bloodlines. But unlike bloodlines. Those who eat these fruit lose the ability to swim. Said Kurama as Naruto just nods his head dumbly. So Luffy was the only one to get a bounty. Questioned Sanji as he wasn't to please with this outcome. Well he did punch that rat bastard. So he must have put a bounty on Luffy to cover his ass. Said Zoro with a smirk on his face looking over at Sanji. I know we should have stomped that bastard to dust. Growled Nami as she wasn't happy that rat got away. Don't worry about him. I'm sure my grandpa will get him. Said Luffy waving them off and looking at Naruto. So what do you say? Do you want to join my crew? He asks once more. Naruto looks at everyone and back at Luffy. Sure why not? He told the hyper boy. The I now have a ninja on the crew. Yelled Luffy with excitement. Naruto chuckles at him. You remind me of me. 
he said still laughing. As long as you're not a bottomless pit we'll be fine. Said Sanji as he looks at Naruto. Who looks away from him just humming. Damn it. He yelled. Hey, don't worry. I can live off of Raymond. I have most of my life. Said Naruto looking at the crying cook. Sanji looked at him with horror written across his face. What kind of monster only fed you Raymond? He asked not sure if he wanted to know. My mom. Said Naruto not sure what was wrong with that. But she did cook better meals for his siblings though. She is a monster and I will make sure you eat better even if I do make you ramen it will be good for you. Said Sanji with flames in his eyes. Hey, I see a land. Came a voice from outside. That must be Lode Town. Said Nami. We will resupply here and head for the Grand Line. She told everyone. They all nodded their heads to this. Chapter 2. The crew of six dock at the harbor of Lode Town. All right, everyone got their list. Asked Nami as she looked over the five male members of the crew. Yeah, we got them. Said Yusuf as he looked at his list and over at Sanji. Looks like we are shopping together. He told the blonde. That's fine. But don't get in my way. Said Sanji as he looked to shop for a deal and Yusuf was as good as Nami when it came to haggling people to lower prices. Nami looked at Luffy, Zoro, and Naruto. You three stick together. I don't need Luffy making trouble while we are here. She growled at them. Yeah we got it. Said Zoro as he was holding on to Luffy's best collar as said Raven Hairboy was trying to run away as Nami was giving out orders. I already marked him and if need be, I can summon him back to me at any time. Along with anyone else on the crew. Said Naruto with a large grin as he looked at his new crewmates. Nami arched a brow to this. When did this happen? She asked him now wondering when he did it. Naruto grinned. The same grin they knew and saw on Luffy every day. When we all shook hands. He said as he walked past them and pulled Zoro along as he knew the swordsman needed two new swords and he needed to pick up some weapons himself. Nami just stood there frozen in shock, as well as Sanji and Yusuf, as they all three looked at their hands not seeing anything whatsoever. They left the ship as well quickly, as they didn't know how much time they would have if Luffy was on the loose. Naruto, Zoro, and Luffy walked down a side street where a man had pointed them to. There was the only weapons shop led in town that the marines and pirates used as the other shops closed down with the marines always wanting a cheaper price and only one man was able to deal with those snakes and keep his doors open. So Naruto what type of weapons are you looking for? Asked Zoro as he was wondering if the blonde knew how to use a sword. Naruto looked over at the green hair man next to him. He grinned at Zoro. Well I have my family swords as I took them from my dead siblings as they don't need them in the afterlife, as I was leaving the elemental islands I stopped and picked a sword that was willed to me after the person death. The bastard that had was a pain in my ass. But I got it back and I have it sealed away in a tattoo on my right forearm. He said with a smile. Zoro nodded his head. We will have to spar once I have two new swords. He tells Naruto who nods his head to the green hair swordsman. This is awesome. Said Luffy as he hung on both their shoulders swinging back and forth like a kid. Naruto just smiled. While we are at it. I think you should pick up a weapon Luffy. I know a lot of fighters that like to use their hands. But even they had weapons to rely on for you never know. He said to his captain. Luffy nodded his head to the blonde. Yeah, I used to use a lead pipe as a kid with my brothers as we used to fight pirates and other bandits growing up. He said with a grin on his face. Zoro looked over at his captain who doesn't really talk about his past. Well maybe a staff or something. He questioned. Naruto nodded his head. Maybe or a bladed weapon. I guess we will see once we go there. He said as they kept walking. New world. Often shaped ship lands on a jungle island as several men move out of the jungle with guns pointed at the man. Lower your weapons. Said the man as another came walking out of the jungle as he heard movement and went to check it out. Well captain will be happy to see you. Said the man with black hair pulled back with a bandana wrapped around it. The golden eye man looks at the shark shooter of the crew. I figure the slacker would. As well I have a little business with him. He told the other. Alright come along. Said the man with his hand resting on his gun as they made their way through the jungle to a large clearing in the center of the jungle. Under a large umbrella red hair man rested against a large log nursing his hangover from the party the night before. Really now Shanks. Said the man with the golden eyes as he narrows them at the man before him. Shanks laughed. Oh. Come on Mick. Come relax and have a drink with me. He said with a laugh. Mihik arched a brow to this. Don't you have a hangover? He questioned the red hair fool. Nah, I'll be fine. It's rare for you to come and find me out here in the middle of nowhere. Said Shanks with a smile. Mihik just rolled his eyes as he walked up and sat down next to Shanks and handed him a bounty poster. On the poster was a boy with raven hair and a large D smile on his face with an old straw hat with a red ribbon on it. Shanks took the bounty poster and looked it over and began laughing. 
Well boys it looks like Anchor has his first bounty. He said with a laugh. The guys gathered around to look at the poster. Well Luffy did pretty good for his first bounty. Said Ben as he laughed as he looked at it. The others took the poster and talked among themselves as Shanks took a bottle of sake from Ben as he handed Mehik a glass of red wine they had on hand just for this man. So what else brought you to my little hideaway? Asked Shanks as he takes a drink of his sake. Mehik took a drink of his red wine and looked over at Shanks. Well I was in the East Blue, I heard word that there was the 4th Shinobi War. But all the hidden villages united as one and fraud against someone called the Rabbit Goddess and one called Madara Echeha. But the one who won the war was a boy named Naruto Uzumaki. He told his friend as he was only one of the very few that knew Shanks' true last name that he has kept secret from the world. I see. Naruto has gotten strong to win a war on his own. Said Shanks as he had a faraway smile on his face as he has a photo of a little blonde baby in his cabin with whiskers on his face, along with his two siblings. Mihik nodded his head. Yes. He said and took another drink of his wine. I wonder how Naruto is doing. He thought to himself as he only gotten pictures of his nephews and niece from his eldest sister. But he always felt attachment to Naruto. The same attachment he had for Luffy. Low town. Zoro had found his two swords as Luffy looked around at all the weapons in the shop. So, how much for these two mister? Asked Zoro. They are free. For you're the only person that I have ever seen that those two cur swords allowed you to touch them. He said with a smile on his face. Luffy laughed and pulled out two short swords. One has an ivory handle with a ruby gem on the top and a crimson handle with an onyx stone on the top of it. I like these two. They feel right in my hand. He told the two with him. The man looked over at the boy and frowned. What is it with you boys and cursed items? He said with a large sigh. Naruto laughed. We just have that luck. He told the man as he had already restocked with kunai was looking at other weapons for something else he would like to try to play with. I can tell. For I keep seeing that your eyes keep going over to that chain bow staff. Said the owner of the shop. Yeah, I figure our female crewmate could use it. For she has a bow staff and this weighted one would be a good one for her. Said Naruto as he picked it up and looked it over. The owner nodded his head to this. It is good to know you care about her. He said. Zoro nodded his head as Luffy bounced over to his two crewmates. I think I want these and I hope you'll teach me. He asked Zoro and Naruto. Zoro just smirk. Sure. It will be fun. He said as he wanted to see if Luffy can handle a sword. Naruto just laughed. I think Zoro would be the best one to teach you. For I do know Kenjutsu. But he is a true master as I am just not as strong as him. He said as he thought back to when his mother would tell him he would never be as good as his two siblings. But he shook his head of those memories. They are not part of his new life. He was now a pirate not a shinobi. Are you going to let that old drunk know you're still alive? Asked Kurama as he was enjoying Naruto's new friends and how carefree they are with life and enjoying themselves. Yeah, but I think I'll do that once we are in the Grand Line. That way no one can come after me. Also I need to take my name off the toad contract as well. He told Kurama as he the fox nodded his head to this. The two looked at Naruto as he looked, he appeared to be spaced out for just a moment. So, do we need anything else? Asked Luffy as he took his two short swords up to the owner of the shop to pay. Did I can't charge you for them. Just take them. He told Luffy as he looks at Naruto. That's 10,000 berries. He told the blonde. Naruto nodded his head for his kunai and the chained weighted bow staff. Alright guys let's go looks around for Luffy wants to check out that tower. He said with a smile to his two new friends. With Nami. Nami looked around the town and bought clothing for all the crew as she knew all their sizes and shoes and everything they needed for them. She took them back to the ship and put them away. Now is time to get what I need for my maps. She told herself clapping her hands together. Returning back to town Nami wandered around and found a shop she needed and found strange compasses that looked like little globes. Hey mister. What are these? She asked the man behind the counter. The man looked up from the book he was reading. That is a log post you need for a for the grand line. He tells her. Nami nods her head and picks up the log post and finds one that she would like and picked up too. For you never know if you need a backup and with the boy she has to deal with. Yeah, they would break on of them. She walked around some more and picked up what she needs for mapping and a few other things and paid the man. Center of town. Zoro, Naruto had their hands on Luffy's collar as they stopped him from climbing up the tower. Something doesn't feel right. Said Naruto looking around the area. Zoro looked over at him. You have that feeling as well. He asked. Naruto nodded his head to this. Luffy looked at them. Yeah. I know what you two are talking about. But I really want to see what Gold D. Rogers saw when he was up there. He said with a pout. I know Luffy. But I think it might be best we leave. Something isn't right. Said Naruto looking around even more. Luffy pouts again but nods his head. 
Fine. Next time I guess. He said letting out a breath as Zoro relaxed and still kept his grip on his captain as Naruto did the same thing. Off in the shadows two cloaked figures frown. This isn't good. Said a somewhat high-pitched male voice to the person next to him. Well we can get him in the grand line. She said with a frown glaring at the blonde that stood with the raven hair boy. In another shadow a man in a green cloak smiled. Luffy. We will meet soon. He thought to himself. The crew met up at the ship. I think we should get going. Something feels off. Said Nami as she looks at the others. They all nod their heads as they board the ship and get ready to set sail when a high wind picked up and blow them out of harbor when Smoker appeared glaring at the ship that had gotten away. I will get you straw hat Luffy. Growls out Smoker as he turned to his men. Get me a ship. He growled out. Chapter 3. Hinoha. Ashina sat on her bed crying as she heard a strange ringing from her transponder snail. She pulls it out of the top of her nightstand. Cleaning the tears off of her cheeks she answers it. Hello. Hey Kashina chan Came a voice she hadn't heard for a while. Shanks. Said Kashina a little surprised as she really didn't want to speak to her brother just yet. Shanks chuckled on his end of the transponder snail. Well little sister. How are things going back in the village? He questions her. Kashina froze. She didn't know what to tell her elder brother about everything that has happened in the past few years. Kashina. Questioned Shanks as he lost his laughter in his voice. Um Shanks. A lot has happened in the past five years. Began Kashina. But Shanks. Mihik and his men looks over at the crimson hair man. What's going on? Questions asked Mihik. Shanks shook his head as he didn't know just yet. Kashina. Tell me what's going on. You better tell me now or I'll be there in the next few days. He tells her in a serious tone that was rare for the man that sat before his crew and friends. Kashina took a deep breath and letting it out slowly, she began to tell him the story about how Naruto's siblings ran away with the last Ichiha and how they went off with Orochimaru. How Naruto brought back Tsunade and became a student of Jiraiya and how he carried the fourth war on his own shoulders. But when she had arrived at the Valley of the End with Kakashi and Tsunade. I found the dead bodies of two of my children and the Ichiha and the right arm of Naruto's with his forehead protector laying on his hand. But his body was nowhere to be found. She told her brother. Shanks' eyes widened and was shaking at what he had heard from his sister. His little Naruto was gone. I'm sorry Shanks. I never was a good mother to Naruto I focused on his siblings. I didn't know I was doing that until his friends pointed out about what happened. I was horrible. When I thought back to everything to him as he was growing up. I mostly feeding him Raymond and ignoring him and just focusing on their training and praising them over him and just belittling him. Said Kashina as she began crying once more. Shanks' jaw dropped at hearing this as he recovered, he tightened his jaw at how Kami forsaken stupid his sister was with her son. Kashina I can't believe you. Overlooking one of your child. To kiss the damn ground of two spoiled ass brats. I can't believe you. He growled out. You know what. I'm glad Naruto is dead. He is better off without you and that fucking village for all the abuse you have placed him though. He growled out. Kashina gasped. But before she could say anything Shanks hung up the snail. Shanks looked at his men. I am sad I have lost my nephew. But I'm not sad in losing those two other spoiled brats. As they have always been entitled. For the swords I wanted for Naruto to have. They took. He vented as they listened to him as tears rolled down his cheek. Going Mary. This Wednesday and Mr. Nine sat tidied up on the deck of the ship. Naruto looked over at Luffy as they sailed to Whiskey Point. Hey Luffy. Called out Naruto. Luffy looks over at his crewmate. Yeah Naruto. He questions tilting his head to the right. Do you guys have a transponder snail? Questioned Naruto looking at his captain. Luffy grins. Yeah. Nami has it for I killed the last one. He tells Naruto with a grin. Nami looks up from the log post on her wrist. Yeah it's in the galley. She tells him. Thanks. Said Naruto as he grins at her and walks into the galley. Sanji looks over at who's walking into his kitchen. What do you need Naruto? Questioned Sanji with a cigarette hanging from his lips. I'm just looking for the transponder snail. Said Naruto as he spots it sitting on the corner of the room next to a little red couch. Oh alright. Said Sanji as he spots Luffy coming into the galley followed by Zoro as they came in for something to drink. What do you two shitheads want? He questions the two. Luffy Jins. Sanji I'm thirsty. He told the ship chef. Fine sit down and I'll make you something to drink. Sanji tells Luffy as the grinning boy bounces to the table and sits down at the table and looks over to Naruto. Zoro reappears with a bottle of sake and comes back and sits down as well to chat with his captain and the cook. Naruto dials up the number on the snail. But Shanks and Mihik. I can't believe my sister. If she didn't want Naruto, she could have sent him with me. Shanks growls out making a fist with his single hand. But red hair do you really think you could have handle a child? 
questioned Mehak looking at the man sitting next to him. Shanks let out a sigh. No. I almost got Luffy killed and now with Naruto and the battles with the other three Yankos. It wouldn't have gone well. He said with a sigh. That's right. But what some of what your sister did tell you the boy would have been safer with you. Also you could have left him with that Luffy kid as well. Said Mihik trying to make his friend smile. Yeah, I could have done that. He would have grown up safer with Garp around him. Said Shanks with a grin on his face. Mihik pales at this. So the brat is related that old goat. He questioned. Shanks nods his head when his snail began to ring. He lets out a sigh. Who's calling me now? He said answering the call. Hello. Uncle Shanks. Questioned a young male voice. Shanks blinked several times. Who's this? He asked. The snail grins. It's me Naruto. You have already forgotten about me? He questioned. Nara Naruto, how? I was told you're dead. Said a freaked out Shanks. Going Mary. Luffy looks over at Naruto when he heard a name he knew very well. Hey, Naruto, are you really talking to Red Hair Shanks? He questioned the boy. Naruto looks up from his call with his uncle. Yeah. He's my uncle. He tells his captain. No. I'm not dead. I just faked my death after I lost my arm when my sister cut it off. He told Shanks. Who's the other person there with you Naruto and I'm glad you're not dead. I'm glad you left that damn village and got away from your mother. But she did say you studied with Jiraiya. If you sign the toad contract you might want to void it so the old fool doesn't summon you back. Shanks tells his nephew. Oh well that is my Captain Monkey D. Luffy and about Jiraiya. He was killed by one of his former students. So they have no way of reverse summoning me. Also the only summons that the toads really talk to are the slugs and the monkeys. With old man third dead and Tsunade wanting to kill mom. Yeah no one is going to make me return to that hellhole. Said Naruto with a sad smile on his face. Hi Shanks. Yelled Luffy from across the room. Shanks looks over at Mihik and Ben. Well damn. Small world. I understand that for your mom told me that Tsunade was pissed off at her. Hello Luffy. He said with a little shock written on his face. With Shanks. Gasup comes wandering up to see his captain looking shocked as well as Ben and Mihik. What's going on guys? He asked them. Ben looks over at Gasup. Captain's dead nephew isn't dead and guess who he is sailing with now. He said with a chuckle. Gasup looked at the man before him very confused. Who's he now sailing with? He asked as he didn't know where this was going. Ben laughed. He somehow found Luffy and joined his crew. He said. Oh wow. That's nice to hear. Said Yasup. They can hear Luffy yelling something and then Naruto say something. Shanks looks over at Yasup. Your son Yusup joined Luffy's crew as well. He said with a grin on his face. Yasup's jaw hung open. Will you tell your nephew to have my son call me sometime and for him to tell me about him and his mom. He said with a proud smile on his face. My son is now a pirate wonder if he is a sharpshooter like myself. He wondered himself as he just grins even more. So Naruto what are your plans and did you get your swords from your dead siblings? Questioned Shanks. Well I'm going to sail with Luffy and just be free and see the world. I did take the swords from them that mom gave them. Why? Asked Naruto a little confused at the last part. Shanks frowned. Well those swords were never meant for those two entitled brats. Those were always meant for you as I had chosen you as the Uzumaki clan head before I left the elemental nations. But it appears your mother disrespected my wishes. For Naruto I have chosen you as my heir to carry on our bloodline and family name. He told the blonde. Well Shanks I'm honored but how I left the village and faked my death. I pretty much left it to mom to do that. Said Naruto. Shanks laughed. Nope with her screwing up. It went back to me. But with you alive. It returns to you. But I will not tell your mother that you're alive until you are ready. He told Naruto. Thanks. I don't need her coming after me in the Grand Line. Said Naruto. You're already in the Grand Line? Questioned Shanks. Yeah. Luffy has his goal of becoming King of Pirates. So we are also having fun while doing this. Said Naruto with a grin. Shanks grinned. I'm glad. Remind Luffy when the time comes, I want my hat back. He said with a larger grin on his face. Naruto chuckle. Yeah I'll tell him. But I have to go. Said Naruto. Alright. I'll see you soon Naruto. Said Shanks. Yeah. Bye. Said Naruto and with that there was a click. Shanks relaxed with a smile on his face. I'm glad he is alive and he is with Luffy. He told everyone. That boy is interesting. With your nephew with him. This will become remarkably interesting as he has a swordsman that I want to see if he will live up to his promise to his captain. Said Mihik taking a drink of his red wine. Shanks looks over at his old friend. I see. Well then. We must keep an eye out for the straw hat pirates. He said with a grin on his face. Chapter 4. Once they made, they made to Whiskey Point. 
Zoro became on edge with all the strange people that lived there and all the headstones that lined the hills behind the village. Naruto agreed with the swordsman. Don't lower your guard. The swordsman has a good sense not to trust these fools like that foolish captain of yours. Said Kurama opening his crimson eyes to see what was happening around them. Yeah something doesn't smell right. I can smell sand and snakes. Or is that crocodiles? Questioned Naruto not sure what he was smelling. You're smelling crocodile. Said Kurama as he only smelt that only a few times before. For you rarely found that creature in the elemental islands. Luffy grinned at the friendly people and chatted with them. They really do believe I was born yesterday. Even my crew believe that I'm that stupid to fall for their tricks. They have slipped some drugs into my food. But with how fast my body burns things off. It will only last for about another 10 minute and they will slip some more in the next dish they give me. He thought as he let out a mental sigh. The night had fallen and Zoro, Nami and Naruto had taken part in several drinking games with the people of the town. It was about 2 am and people were asleep all around the bar. Zoro slowly opens his eyes looking around the bar. The light of the moon reflects off the silver of his eyes, making them glow like a wolf on the hunt. Slowly he stands up as he sees Nami slipping out the door and Naruto climbing out a window. Looks like it's time to hunt. He thought as a wolfish grin graced his lips and he slipped out the bar door. Luffy cracks an eyes open watching his three crewmates leave the bar. It's time to move everyone back to the ship. I know it will take a little time for the drugs to wear off of Yusup. But I'm not sure how long it will last on Sanji. He thought to himself as he stood up and quickly picked up his three crewmates and placed them over his shoulder when Sanji awoke. What's going on captain? Questioned Sanji as he stood up on his own. Luffy looks at him as he hands over Yusup. It's time to leave. Our welcome has come to an end and they are getting ready to turn on us. He said as his eyes harden. Sanji lit a cigarette as he swung Yusup over his shoulder. I'll get the ship ready. Go and find the others. He said as he placed the sleeping doctor under his right arm. Thanks. Said Luffy as he walked out of the bar to find the others. Sanji let out a stream of smoke. It appears our captain did taste the drugs in our food and drink. He isn't a moron like we believe him to be. He said to himself as he walked out of the bar and back to the dock where their ship awaited them. Every so often kicking some fool thinking they could attack him from the side or from behind. Off in the shadows a young woman with blue hair spoke with a man with white hair. Vivi you need to leave here. It isn't safe for you here anymore. Said the man with white hair. This is what Luffy and Zoro walked onto. The two froze seeing them as Zoro's eyes glowed softly in the moonlight as an aura of a king surround Luffy, making the two take a step back from them. Several explosions are heard around the town as Naruto and Nami jump down between the four. Naruto grins looking at his captain. Hey captain. I got the information you asked for. It appears miss. Wednesday here is the missing princess from a country that one of the seven warlords is trying to take over. But she has been found out and there is now a bounty on her head. She is wanted dead or alive. But mostly dead. Said Naruto as he put away his little scroll. Luffy looks to the blue hair girl. What will it be princess? We can help you get out of here or you can stay here. For we are leaving as Naruto has set this place up to blow up in the next five minutes. He told the girl and the older man standing next to her. The hand moves to cover her mouth as she gasped. You are going to destroy this place. She questioned him. Yes. Why should I allow Crocodile have his little minions running around freely? Questioned Luffy as he tilted his head to the right as Zoro just smirked. I have known about this little group since the East Blue for they came looking for me back on my home island. He said with a grin. Flashback. Fifteen-year-old Luffy sitting on a stack of trash overlooking Grey Terminal as several men come walking up to him. Hey kid. One of the guys call out to him. Luffy looks over his shoulder looking at the man. Yeah. He asks looking at the group of men walking his way. Do you know where we can find Crimson King? Asked a guy on the right with a black cowboy hat and white duster. It depends. Who's looking for him? Questioned Luffy as he studied the man as the people moving around Grey Terminal all stopped to listen to what was going on. We have business with him. Said a man with a white cowboy hat and a grey duster on. Well if you have any business with him. You have to handle all his business with me. Said Luffy standing up and picking up his lead pipe. Why would someone like the Crimson King have a punk kid like you handle his business for him? Questioned the third guy with a grey cowboy hat and a black duster. Luffy grinned. For he trusts a kid over fools and a kid can never lie to him. He said as he turned his back to the three fools and jumped off the trash and began walking away. Anyways our business is done here. I know he doesn't want anything to do with you three. He told them as he waved them off and walked into the forest to see if he can find one of the kings of the forest for dinner tonight. The three men looked at each other and back to where the boy once stood. But he was long gone. One of them called out to an old man sitting before a fire. Oi old man. The old man looked up from his coffee over at the three. What? 
he asked tried and annoyed. He just wanted to enjoy his coffee and maybe have a nap. Who's that kid? Asked the one in the grey cowboy hat. The old man arched a brow at them. That was the Crimson King or Luffy. He lives up in the mountain in that forest with the bandits that live up there. He said a little annoyed as if everyone should have known that. The three looked at each other. That boy is the one we are looking for. They ask each other. We let's go hunting for him and take him back to the boss. For no one can tell the boss no. Said the one with black cowboy hat. They nodded their heads and ran off into the forest. The old man that was sitting before them went up in a cloud of smoke and sitting there was Luffy as he just grinned at them. Fools. Do they really think they can get me to join them so easily? He just giggled and ran off into the forest jumping up into the trees. I should send a clone to allow date and no trouble is coming her way and have the guys ready. Said Luffy to himself as he made a shadow clone of himself and the clone nodded to him and vanished in a swirl of leaves. Hint 1. That damn brat moves pretty quick. Panted the one in the white cowboy hat. As they run into a clearing Luffy is sitting in the center of the clearing looking up to the sky smiling. I told you I wasn't going to join. Never looking at them. Are you sure about that Crimson King? Asked the grey cowboy head. Luffy looks out the corner of his right eye to the man. I would only join if I was the boss. But how you all smell of crocodiles. I believe that the warlord Sir Crocodile wouldn't allow me to run the show. He said with a grin. The three men froze at hearing this. H how did you know this? All three question as one. It isn't hard to figure out. As there is only one pirate in the world that uses crocodiles and has them as pets. As well in the underworld there has been a lot of talk about him making a lot of shadow moves against the world government. Said Luffy glancing over at them with a cheeky grin on his face. Their jaws hung open. Boss could use a second in command or many be third in command. They told Luffy. Luffy just chuckled at this. I don't think Miss All Sunday wouldn't like being replaced. As she is his right hand woman and I know Mr. One wouldn't like being replaced either as he is also close to Mr. Zero. He said laughing at his own little joke. They just blinked at what the boy just told them was true. But before they could say anything a red hair woman and a large group of men came walking into the clearing. Is there a problem here Luffy? Questioned Dayton. Luffy looked over at his mother figure. This nice man want me to join an underground criminal organizations and want me to be a lonely little fish to a much larger fish. He told her. Dayton laughed. I think no. Garp would be terribly upset with me if I allowed you to go play crime boss. Let alone he is already upset with me about you still wanting to be a pirate. She said looking at the three fools. Luffy laughs at this. I know. But it's better than me running off to where my mother is at and doing whatever she has been up to. He said as he looked down at a necklace she had sent him of a crimson crystal and two black gemstones on each side of it. How's your mother doing by the way? Questioned Dayton as they had forgotten about the three fools standing there shaking in their boots as the bandits growled at them licking their blades glaring at them. The letter I got two weeks ago she is doing well. She was made a boss or something like that. But I should be getting another letter anytime soon. Said Luffy with a soft smile as he was happy. He had been able to speak to his mother for the past few years after Garp gave him a letter from her. Hey. Don't ignore us. Yelled the fool with the white cowboy hat. Luffy now looked at him. Like I told you. I will not be joining the billions or the millions or those bounty hunters you have at the being of the Grand Line. So return to your master and tell him to screw himself. He told them. The man with the white cowboy hat grinned. Well boy we can't take no as your answer and you know too much. As you know who our boss is. That means you have to die now. He said. But before anyone knew what happened Luffy extended his right arm and three kunai shot out from his hand and hit the three men in the heart. He let out a sigh. Dayton. Do you guys think and can send them back to the warlord crocodile for me? He asked her as he walked over to the bodies and took the kunai to leave no trace of his weapon. Yeah you got it kiddo. Just go and catch dinner for us tonight. Dayton as the guys went to work gathering the bodies and getting ready to ship back the grand line. Yeah you got it. Said Luffy with a smile and walked off as a small poof of smoke appeared on his shoulder. End of flashback. Everyone looked at Luffy as Zoro's eyes hardened. I was looking for the Crimson King for he had a sizable bounty on him. He told his captain. Naruto's blue eyes hardened as he looked at his captain. Luffy. He said as the straw hat boy looked at him. What is it Naruto? Questioned Luffy looking at him with his own honey brown eyes hardening. Who's your mother and where is she from? Questioned Naruto as he wanted to know this. Luffy grinned at him. My mother will be a mystery for a while until she is ready for the world to know. But she is from the elemental nations. He said as he held up his hand to stop Naruto from asking any questions. I will not be telling you the village she is from. But she did make it thought the great fourth shinobi war. But she did get hurt before it. He said looking away. Let's go. Said Luffy as he saw more explosions going off. 
please Princess Vivi we must make our escape and we can use the destruction of the island as cover for you died in it. Said the man standing next to her. She slowly nodded her head as they took off running for the ship as Sanji had the ship ready to sail and Yusuf was slowly coming too. Set sail. Yelled Nami as they all boarded the ship. Yes, Nami swan. Said Sanji as he ran inside to stir the ship out of the port and into the open sea. Naruto looked at Luffy. So how long have you been training as a shinobi? He questioned his captain. Luffy tilted his head to the right as he could see his crew listening and watching them. Since I was three years old, my grandfather followed the scrolls my mother sent him to get me started, and a little summons appeared on my third birthday to make sure my chakra network was working and was normal. For my father isn't from the elemental islands. So she wasn't sure I would be able to use chakra like yourself and the others. I almost slipped up when I meet Shanks when I was seven. But when I was about to save myself, he got in the way and lost his arm. He said looking up to the cloud drifting in front of the moon as a kunai appeared in his hand and flow across the deck and a thunk was heard as it hit the wood next to the kitchen door. Hello, miss, all Sunday. Or should I be saying Nika Robin? Said Luffy as his eyes hardened and his hand moved to his hat as he felt something moving on his back. This. All Sunday narrowed her eyes at the young man wearing a crimson vest and a strawette. Good evening Crimson King. I am honored that you know who I am. Said Robin with a smile on her lips. No, the honor is all mine. Said Luffy as he bows to her. What brings you to my humble ship? He questions her as everyone is wide eye watching their captain acting as if he was a noble. I am here for the spy and for the Crimson King, as for my partner Mr. Zero still would like you to join his little group. Said Robin with a smile. Well as you can tell Miss Robin. Your spy isn't here. Said Luffy as his hands move around and all Robin could see was Zoro, Naruto, Nami, and Yusuf looking at her. As you can tell it is just my crew. I believe the young woman you are looking for I saw laying on the ground dead from the explosion I had my crew set off. He told her. I see. Said Robin as she looked around. Vivi held her and over her mouth with fear as her eyes grew with fear. But the raven hair woman's icy blue eyes just passed her by every time. How is she not seeing me? She questioned herself. Naruto looked at Luffy who just winked at him and he walked up to Robin. Well miss. All Sunday. Give your boss a message for me. I shall see him soon and I will give her my answer in person. He told her with a smirk on his lips. Very well. I look forward to meeting you once more Monkey D. Luffy. Said Robin as she jumped back onto her turtle and vanished into the shadows of the sea. Everyone looked at Luffy as he walked up to the wall his kunai rest. Naruto's eyes narrowed as he knew that style of kunai. Luffy? How didn't she not see Vivi while she was standing right here? Questioned Nami as she looks at her captain as he turns to look at her with his honey brown eyes hard. I have ability to a something called a jinjutsu without using hand signs. All I have to do is lock eyes with someone. I trained for years to do that. I am better than the best jinjutsu master from Naruto's village. Said Luffy with a grin on his face. Your captain has many secrets. He pretends to be a fool. But he is one to watch out for. He also has a power that flows out of him. One that I have never felt before. Said Kurama as he watched a boy that looked at Naruto out of the corner of his left eye as he was laughing at how Yusuf and Nami freaked out by his skills. I'm hungry. Said Luffy as he turns around walking into the kitchen and looks at Sanji. Food Sanji. Yusuf take over for Sanji. He ordered as Yusuf ran into the kitchen to take over for Sanji for the blonde can make a snack for their captain. Sanji looks at Yusuf a little strange and the others that follow their captain into the kitchen. Did I miss something? He questioned. Luffy grins. Not much. We had an unwanted visitor and we will be going up against a warlord and we will be returning a princess back to her home country. He said as he sat down looking out the window. Zoro takes his place next to Luffy on his right and Nami to his left and Naruto to the right of Zoro. Sanji looks to his friends and crewmates a little confused. I'll explain later. Said Nami. Sanji just nods his head to this and get back to making food for everyone. So princess tell us your story. Said Luffy looking over at Vivi. But before Vivi could speak a ring could be head coming from Luffy's head. Reaching up and removing his hat Luffy places it down onto the table. Naruto watches him as he watches Luffy push Chakra into the seal on the crimson ribbon on the hat and a black little snail appears out of it. Hello. Said Luffy. Luffy Chan. Said a woman. But her voice sounded weird that she was talking underwater. Naruto pushed Chakra though his body but he noticed it wasn't a Jinjutsu as Luffy smirked over at him. Sorry Naruto. It isn't a Jinjutsu. It's just how mom has my snail set up. Said Luffy as he looks back at the snail as its eyes widen but the woman doesn't say anything. Have you left on island sweetheart? Questioned the woman. Yeah mom. I left over a month ago. Said Luffy with a large grin on his face. I also have a pretty good crew. He told her. Really? 
I am sorry I didn't call for your birthday. We had to do a lot of rebuilding. Said Luffy's mom. I understand mom. But I did your gift. Thanks for the swords and kunai. I love them. Said Luffy with a large grin on his face. I'm glad sweetie. How are your seals holding up? She asked him. They're holding up pretty well. I'm sad your friend passed during all of this. But all the books you sent me are helping. So I am able to handle all my seals on my own mom. So please don't worry about it. If need be. I think I have two or three crew members I can train in seals to help me if I need them to. Said Luffy. Tell me about your crew sweetie. Said the woman. Well my first crew member is Rurano Zoro. He is my first mate and swordsman his style is the three swords style. Said Luffy as he grinned at Zoro who smirked. Really he sounds strong. I'm glad he is someone you can trust to be your first mate. She said. Then there is Nami. She is my navigator and she is a cat burglar. But mom it's crazy she can tell when the weather is going to change and tells us before the storm even appears. Said Luffy with pride in his voice. That's good to hear son. She sounds incredibly talented. She said. Then there is Yusuf he is our snipper and liar. He tells surprisingly good tall tells and he is the son of Yasup one of Red Hair Shank's crew members. Said Luffy as he laughs at Yusuf who is pouting at being called out. She laughs. Well he will keep you entertained for sure. She told her son. Then there is Sanji. He is our chef. He makes sure we eat well and kicks my ass if I don't eat my veggies and no one is allowed to leave the table without eating everything on their plate for no one wastes food in his kitchen. He is a kickboxer. But never uses his hands. But he does uses his hands when he does his hand spin kicks. Said Luffy as he grins over at Sanji as he is listening to his captain talk about each of them to his mother. I'm glad someone is finally getting you to get your veggies. I know your brothers tried and your grandfather that old bastard only thinks meat is a balanced diet. She said with a sigh. Luffy laughed at her. All mom meat is really good. He said still grinning. Luffy don't make me show up and kick your ass. I can be scarier than your grandfather. She said grinning as Luffy paled. Yes mom. Said Luffy sheepishly as the others laughed. So are you going to tell me about your final member of your crew? She questioned him. Yeah. Our final member for now is Yuzumaki Naruto. We meet him in the middle of the East Blue as we were sailing to the Logue Town before for heading to the Grand Line. He is a shinobi and can do some pretty cool things. Said Luffy with a grin on his face. She chuckled at him. Luffy silly boy. You have some of the same skill as him. So you do know you can have him help you in some of the skill you are having troubles with. She told her son. Luffy's eyes widen as he looks over at Naruto who is looking at him as his own eyes widen as well. He didn't even think that something like this could happen. Yeah. Well when we have some time, I'll ask him. For now we have to help a princess and I need to see if what I felt from Zoro and Sanji. If they have chakra now. If they do mom can I call on my summons to help me? Asked Luffy looking at the snail looking at his mom. It was quiet for a moment before the woman spoke again. Yes, Luffy. You can call for the men if you need more help. Call me and I will send my summons to help you as well. She told him. Thank you, mom. I love you. Said Luffy as he knew she was about to go. I love you too sweetie. I have sent you some more scrolls. They're in your shared cabin waiting for you. She told him. She told him before she hung up. Everyone looked at Luffy as he resealed his snail. What the hell just happened? Asked Yusup. Luffy looked up. Huh? He asked. Who were you talking to Luffy? Asked Nami looking at him. My mom da. Said Luffy as if it wasn't a big deal. Before anyone could say anything Luffy makes a seal less shadow clone. The clone just nods his head and leaves the kitchen as Sanji loses his cancer stick and everyone else's eyes widen as Naruto just narrows his eyes at him. He must have been trained by someone. But who? Questioned Kurama watching Luffy from his open cage. I have no idea and I don't know who his mother is. But the kunai he used was from Tenten's store for it has her father's seal on it. Said Naruto as he tried to piece it all together. The clone returns with the scrolls and Luffy looks at them and it had all types of element jutsus and fighting styles and a scroll with supplies in it. Luffy what's your element? Questioned Naruto looked at him. Luffy blushed a little. I can use them all. He said looking away. My mom said that was rare the few times she came to check up on me and was shocked to see what I can do. The one that freaked her out the most was the wood style I used on accident when I was attacked by one of the mountain kings at the age of four. He said looking away. Naruto's eyes widen looking at him. There was only one person that could use the jutsu in my village and that was the first tokage. He said with shock lacing his voice. Luffy shrugged his shoulders. Yeah I don't know nothing about this hoe cake person. But I rarely use my skills anymore. But I will use them if I need to. I used it against Arlong. That bastard pissed me off. He didn't like the hidden lotus very much. With my body being rubber there wasn't any backlash on it. 
He said looking at the scroll before him saying drunken fist. He grinned looking at Zoro. Hey Zoro, we have to try this one. He said to his swordsman who looked at the scroll in his captain's hand. Sounds like fun and we get to drink while we train. Said Zoro smirking. Sanji walks over looking at the scroll from over his captain's shoulder. You know we are going to increase our sake budget. He told the two who looked over at Nami who just let out a sigh. I knew too. Said Nami as she didn't want to hear it. Naruto just chuckled at the thought of Rock Lee, who was a natural at the drunken fist. I'm pretty good at the sleeping fist. Said Luffy giggling. Everyone looked at him. What is that? Asked Usopp. It's fighting while sleeping. I can even eat while sleeping too. It is something I learned while training with my grandpa. Luffy said with a grin. What kind of grandfather does he have? Everyone thought as one. Anoha Hokage Tower Hokage Office. Sunade bite her thumb looking out the window of her office. He is doing well, and he found him. I'm glad they are getting to know each other. So should I call and speak with Shanks? She thought to herself as she reached into her desk and saw four snails. A purple snail with tattoos on its face began to ring. She reached for it and answered it. Hello. She said. It's been a while love. When are you going to be by my side once more? Asked the man on the other line. A soft smile graced her lips. Do you really want me by your side? She asked him. More than ever. I saw our son. He has grown so much. We have missed so much my love. Said the man. Well you know I have been tied back to my home village. Said Sunaid. But the boy that brought you back was lost. There isn't anything there holding you there anymore. You cousin is trash for how she had forsake her son that was the hero of your village and saved you when I was too weak to. Said the man. The tear rolled down her cheek. Dragon. Are you sure you want your broken wife by your side? She asked her husband. The small smile crossed his lips. I never saw my strong beautiful wife broken. I just saw a beautiful woman that needed a strong husband to take care of her heart when she needed him and I was a fool who wasn't a man to take care of her. He said looking up to the sky. Sunaid smiled at this. About time. She said at this. I know. It took me 17 years to get the balls to call you and tell you I need you by my side. Said Dragon looking down at the snail in his hand. I need you too. You're right. I am no longer needed here in this Kami forsaken village and I have been sending our son all the family scrolls and I also sent him a copy of the village scroll. He is strong and is extraordinarily talented as a shinobi. Said Tsunade as she looks out the window to the village. I know. He is known as the Crimson King in the underworld and I'm going to make sure the whole world is going to know that name and make sure he becomes king of all pirates. Said Dragon grinning. I've heard. He was only 8 years old when he got that name. Said Tsunade as she remembered the day he got the name. I was proud of him. I was in town and saw him gain claim of that name and watched him save his brother and now Sabo is part of my army. Said Dragon grinning. How's his eye? Asked Tsunade. It healed well. Thank the young woman you sent to take care of him. Luffy wouldn't stop crying until he woke up. Said Dragon. Yeah. That is what she told me. He loves his brothers and will do anything for them. Said Tsunade remembering meeting Ace and Sabo and adopting them as her sons as well. I do need to see those two boys as well. She added letting out a sigh. Well Sabo is docked in the land of waves waiting for you and I'm in the east blue waiting for him and you. Said Dragon grinning. Tsunade's eyes widen. Bastard. Dragon chuckles. I know but you love me my dear wife. He said. Fine tell Sabo I'll be there in a week. I'll give these bastards a few days and I'll tell them who's taking over and I'll run away. Said Tsunade with a grin on her face. As you wish my dear wife. Said Dragon with a grin mirrored by the snail. The click she hung up on him. Tsunade reached for another snail with three scares over its right eye. Hello how may I help you? Said a male voice. Tell the brad I want to talk to him Ben. Said Tsunade with a smile on her face. Ben looked over at Shanks. Shanks looked at him. What? He asked not sure what the hell was going on. Yeah have a call. Said Ben with a devilish grin on his face. Shanks looked at him puzzled. Who's calling me now? He asked as he reached for the snail. Hello, you have the handsome red hair Shanks. Said Shanks with a grin on his face. In a brat. Said Tsunade grinning. Shanks paled. Shit. I didn't do it. He said acting like a genin in trouble with his sensei. Tsunade smirks at this. I heard you met my son. She told him. Shanks looks at the snail a little puzzled. Who's your son? He asked as Ben and Lucky Roo surround him as they wanted to know what was going on. All three men blink and look at each other before Shanks speaks. Who's your son Tsunade sensei? Questions Shanks. The large grins graces her lips. Monkey Sanju D. Luffy. She told him. It went quiet on the other end as Shanks eyes widen in shock as his jaw hit the ground before him and his ale mug fell over. 
Ben looked at his captain as he was wondering what did this woman have to do with Luffy. Captain? He questioned. Shank snapped out of it. You mean you're the mystery wife of one Mankiti dragon? He questioned as his huge eyes stayed on the snail before him. Yes. Dragon is my husband. Yes, Luffy is my son and Ace and Sabo are my adopted sons. Said Tsunade as Shanks paled even more as he met both boys before and they were handfuls. But why did you leave your son with that crazy old bastard garb? Asked Shanks. Tsunade let out a sigh. Danzo almost killed him as an infant and Dragon is too high profile and I needed to stay in the elemental islands. So I had to turn to garb to protect my baby. I had no one. Kishina was being a spoiled princess and Jiraiya was a fool I couldn't trust my only son with him. She told him. I now understand. Said Shanks. That is why I left. Danzo tried taking me and Rogers saved me. He said looking away. I know. Said Tsunade. If Rogers were still alive, I would have had him take my son. But he was long gone. So I had to go with Garp. But I did see my son. But he kept it secret and I did train him in shinobi arts and he almost saved himself when you saved him and lost your arm. Once I'm in the new world. Come see me for a new arm. She told him. You finally figured that out? Asked Shanks. Yes. But it will only work with those with Yuzumaki or Sanju blood. Anyone else. It will not work. Said Tsunade as she let out a sigh. So Luffy is my little cousin? Asked Shanks. Yes. He is. So if you see him. Take care of him. Said Tsunade with a faraway smile on her face. I will. He is taking care of Naruto for me. Said Shanks. Yeah, I heard. I was shocked to hear that. Why didn't you call and tell me Brad? said Tsunade with a sickly sweet voice. Shanks began sweating. I was worried the Kashina was around you. He said trying to save his own ass. Fine. I let you slide this one time. Next time I'm not taking it easy on you. Said Tsunade with a grin on her face. Thank you. Said Shanks sweating as he looked ready to pass out. I got to go brat. A little bitch is coming to my office. Said Tsunade. Go right by sensei. Said Shanks as he heard a click. Everyone looked at Shanks. What the hell? They asked. Anchor is my little cousin that I didn't know I had. Said Shanks as he grins. He also saved my nephew from death and my bitch of a little sister. So this calls for a party. He said grinning at everyone. Everyone cheered as Shanks leaned back against the tree he was resting against. This changes a lot and I was right about what I thought I saw that day. Luffy is able to use chakra and he held a second chakra as well. What does that mean though? He lost himself in his thoughts as he needed to figure out what secrets his little anchor held. There was a knock on Tsunade's office door. Enter. She called out as she put away her snails. And walked Kashina and Kakashi. I have come to tell you I have spoke to my brother Shanks and I have brought dishonor to the Yuzumaki clan and Shanks is now the rightful clan head once more. Said Kashina bowing her head to Tsunade. Tsunade nodded her head to this. I figure this would happen. As Shanks sent me word long ago that Naruto was to be the head of the clan. But his wishes was ignored and you made the other child the clan heir as you ignored him for them. She said glaring at Kishina. Kishina just nodded her head. Well you will just be seen as a branch member like how the Hyuga see their second born members. Said Tsunade smirking at the red head before her. Until Shanks has an heir. The clan ends with him. Any children you have will never be able to claim to be of the main family or clan heir. She added as she had already drafted a document earlier that day about this and was going to tell Shanks until she spoke to her husband and cousin. Kishina's eyes open in horror. Don't worry. I am sending a slug to have Shank sign this. So it will be best that you sign this now. Said Tsunade glaring at Kishina. Kishina nodded her head and walked over to the desk and signed the documents, and a slug appeared. Princess. Said the little pink slug. Please take this to Shanks and have him sign these for me. Said Tsunade. As you wish princess. Said the little pink slug. Twenty minutes went by, and the slug returned with a bottle of rum and documents. Princess. Shank sends you a gift for the news and he will think of giving an heir soon. He does have a lovely girlfriend in the East Blue and if you wouldn't mind picking her up for him. He would be indebted to you. Said the little pink slug. Ambrat never changes. Growled out Tsunade. Now the two before her looked at her confused. Are you taking a trip Lady Hokage? Questioned Kakashi I smiling at the woman. Tsunade looked up at Kakashi. This is the reason I called you here Brad. Kakashi Haddock. You are now the sixth Hokage starting tomorrow morning. The elders and shinobi council have approved it. She told him throwing him the hokage hat. Kakashi's single eye widened. What? He asked in shock. I have a husband awaiting me and a son I miss dearly. It is time for me to leave. Said Tsunade as she turned to them. You're married? They both asked at once. Tsunade smirked. 
Yup I have been married for 20 years and I have a 17 year old son that is now a pirate and is enjoying life. Now I'm going to retire and go and rise hell with my husband help my son when I can and my two adopt sons as well. I have on waiting for me to take me to my husband. And another that will be shocked to see me. She told them. Land of wave. Sabo sat on his ship waiting for his adopted mother. He looked at the setting sun as he remembered Dragon calling him and telling she will be there in a few days. I best call Ace and tell him I'm picking up mom. If I don't, he will freak out. He thought to himself as he pulled out a snail wearing a little orange cowboy hat. New world. A sits on the moby looking up at the sky. As he hears a ringing coming from his hat. Everyone looks over at him oddly as they never heard ringing coming from him before. Taking off his cowboy hat Ace focuses chakra into one of the red beads as a little blue snail with a top hat appears before him. Hey Sabo. He said as several eyes pop out of several of his brother's eyes as they never seen him do that before. Hey Ace. Calling to let you know mom is finally leaving the inn. Said Sabo with a grin on his face. Ace's eyes widen at hearing this. What? He yelled with a panic. Did something happen to Luffy? Asked Ace in a panic as he was now fearing for their little brother if their mom was now coming their way. No. Her husband finally told her what she needed to hear from him for a long ass time. Also she misses us and wants to see us. So I guess we will be meeting with Luffy and Alabaster. For what my spies say he has the long lost princess of that country on his ship and is headed that way to go to war with a warlord. Said Sabo with a smirk on his face. Do we have to pay for the funeral this time around? Asked Ace as he was pouting. Nah we can give Gramps the bill this time. For the warlord does belong to the world government said Sabo with a smirk on his face. Ace chuckled at this. Good make the old goat pay for it. The last one almost took all the cash we had. He told his brother. Sabo chuckled. Yeah I heard after we left Lou sent Mr. Zero three of his fools back in a coffin with a note that said Crimson King. I guess Dayton didn't want to spring for three coffins and shove them all in one and ship them off like that. He told his eldest brother. Ace chuckled at this. Why didn't we think of that? We could have saved a lot of money that way. But mom did always send us money to help out what things we needed. He said with a soft smile. Yeah, she did, and she still sends up scrolls for training. So we know she is always thinking of us. Said Sabo with a grin on his face. True. I can see if Pops will let me head that way and met up with you guys there. Is his dad going to be there? Asked Ace. Dunno. He might be. But he is a busy man. He was in Low Town where he almost got into trouble. But he has a surprisingly good crew and they kept him out of trouble said Sabo with a smile. That's good to hear. Well Sabo I'll see you soon. Said Ace as he hung up. Have a safe trip my son. Said Whitebeard as he heard everything. Thanks Pops. Said Ace as he ran off to his room to get ready to leave. Chapter 5. Sunaid looked at the two fools before her. Like I just said. You're now the new Hokage Kakashi. I am leaving in the morning. She told him as she stood up from her chair and glared at them. But. Lady Tsunade. Why did you choose me? Questioned Kakashi as he was now on his knees as he didn't want to be tied to a desk. Sunade looked down at the man on his knees crying. Because I need to rejoin my family and there is nothing keeping me here anymore. She told him as she glared at Kashina as said woman bowed her head looking away from her cousin and Hokage. Fine. Said Kakashi as he stood up and slowly picked up the hat from the floor. Sunade looked at the silver hair man. Also you should find yourself a wife and have a pup kid. For you do need an heir. For I used to think like you until I had my son. He is my greatest joy. All three of my sons. Even Naruto had brought back some of that joy I was missing from not seeing my three sons. She said with a faraway smile on her lips. Bakashi blushes at the idea of getting married. But he did meet a nice girl from the land of waves that was working in the village for the rebuild. Just maybe he could give it a shot. I'll try. He told the busty Hokage. Tsunade smiled at him as she narrowed her eyes at Kashina. As for you. You should just forget about having more children. For we already seen what happened and you failed at it. She told the woman as she pushed past Kashina and left her office for the final time. Shizun stood outside the office with Tauntin in her arms. So are we really leaving? She asked her mistress. Yes, the blue is calling, and my husband is awaiting. As well I miss my sons. Said Tsunade looking at her longtime student and friend. Leaning against the wall was Shikamarinara. Her eye closed as she'd been wishing to speak to the Hokage about something. Lady Hokage. She spoke. Tsunade turned to the raven hair girl. Yes Shikamaru. She questioned the girl before her. I wish to join you on your travels of the blue. Said Shikamaru pushing off the wall to stand tall and before the hokage. She arched a brow at the girl and no young woman standing before her. You do know I will never be returning to the end right? She questioned the girl. Shikamaru nodded her head. Yes. I know. 
with my mom having given birth to my little brother. I am free to do as I please. I am no longer bound by my clan as the sole heiress. I wish to see the world and I know this request is selfish, but it is something I have wanted to do since I was little. Since Naruto and I were kids. She said looking away. Tsunade smiled softly at her. Leaning in close she smiled. Get packed and say your goodbyes. For we are leaving at nightfall. She whispered to the girl. Shikamaru's eyes widen as she nods her head and vanishes in a swirl of leaves. Shizun looks at her mistress. Is that wise? She asked the woman before her. It will be fine. Let's go. Said Tsunade waving off her friend student. Land of Wave. Sabo sat on his boat looking at the small town that he had explored and had gotten information on while he waited for his mom to show up. Um, so a kid named Naruto saved this village from a little troll and proved a demon has a heart. Funny if you think about it. He laughed to himself as he felt a chakra he hasn't felt in a long time. Sabo. Said a woman's voice. Sabo's head snapped up as he saw his mom smiling down at him. Mom. Said Sabo as he jumped up to his feet and jumped up to the dock to where the blonde hair woman stood there waiting for him. Oh my. You have grown since I've last seen you. Said Tsunade as she pulled the young man before her into a hug. You're as beautiful as ever mom. Said Sabo as he returned to bone crushing hug. I'm just glad you made it out of that war alive. You should have called. We would have dropped everything for you mom. You know Luffy, Ace and I would have going to war just for you. He said looking up at her from under his top hat. A soft smile graced her lips. I know my sweet angel. But I couldn't call. I was knocked out too early on in the war and by the time I came to. It was too late and you three would have never gotten here in time. She told him as she kissed his forehead. Sabo blushes as he notices the two other women with her. Mom, he whined. Tsunade chuckled at her embarrassed son. Oh Sabo. You know Shizun already and this here is Shikamarinara. She said pointing to the raven hair girl just looking at the curly hair blonde with the burn scare over his right eye. Sabo smiled at Shizun and nodded his head at Shikamaru. Hey sis. Hello Shikamaru. I am Sabo. I am one of only three of mom's troublemaking sons. He said with a grin. But Sabo turned serious eyes back to his mother. But you sis should have called us. He said giving Shizun a pointed stare. As Shizun looked away from the young man. I couldn't as well this war was over tailed beast. Said Tsunade as she wrapped her arms around Sabo once more hiding his face from Shikamaru so the girl wouldn't see his face. As a shocked expression appeared on his face. I see. He whispered into his mom. Now do you understand why I couldn't call you? Whispered Tsunade back to her son. Yeah. I understand. Sabo whispered back as her hugged her tightly. Tsunade pulled back as her arms are now on Sabo's shoulders. Before we leave the East Blue, we have to stop back on your old home to pick up a little bar own for an annoying little red hair brat. She said with a smirk on her face. Sabo had a deadpan look on his face. Why can't Shanks come and pick her up himself? He grumbled. Well we are here and he is in the new world heading towards your little brother who is going to be fighting a warlord soon. Said Tsunade giving Sabo a pointed glare now. How many time have I told you not to let Luffy get in over his head? She asked him. Sabo held up his hands in surrender. Hey don't blame up. We had to get away from grandpa before he side us up for the marines. You know Ace and I would have been thrown into prison for desertion and us leaving at 17 was better and giving us a head start on the old man. He said with a grin on his face. Tsunade let out a sigh as she pinched the bridge of her nose. I should have just had you three come with me. She said shaking her head. Yeah, that could have worked for a while mom. But you know the sea called to us three and we would have ran away someday from you as well and been marked as missing ninjas. This way we are living life the way we want to. Said Sabo grinning. You're right. As Luffy would have never given up on his dream of being king of all pirates. Said Tsunade with another sigh. Also mom would you want three devil fruit users running around a shinobi village? Asked Sabo with a grin on his face. Tsunade paled. No I wouldn't you three monsters running around with devil fruit powers going wild. She told her son who just grinned laughing. Wait you have a DF? Asked Tsunade looking at her son. Nope. But I just wanted to see your face. Just Luffy and Ace. I am just a hockey user. Said Sabo with a massive grin on his face. You little shit. Said Tsunade making a fist and smacking Sabo behind the head as he moved up a couple steps. Ouch mom. Said Sabo rubbing the back of his head pouting at her. Not working. Only Luffy can pull off those doe eyes on me. Said Tsunade crossing her arms as she walks further into the ship and sees a girl with red hair giggling at what is happening. Hello, ma'am. I am Cola said Cola as she bows to the blonde hair woman. Hello my dear. I am Tsunade Sanju Monkey. Said Tsunade with a smirk on her face as the girl's eyes grows large. It's it's a pleasure to meet you Tsunade-sama. Said Cola with a bow. 
Pola she is just my mom. You don't have to bow to her or call her Sama. Said Sabo walking up behind his friend. Pola narrowed her eyes at him. You need to show respect when it is due. She hissed out at him. Whatever. Sabo told her as he waved her off as he had taken everyone's bags and walked into the lower deck of his small ship. I'll put your bags in the cabins below. Sadly, you might have to share once we pick up Makino. He said looking over his shoulder. Yeah, brat that is fine. Said Tsunade waving off her son. Little garden. Luffy sat on deck looking at his crew as his hat began ringing. He let out a sigh. He removed his head as he focused chakra into it and out popped out a small snail with an orange little cowboy hat on. Hey Ace. He said grinning. Hey Lou. Calling to find out where you're at. Said Ace from the other side. Well we blow up Whiskey Pike and now we are on an island like looks like time has forgot. For we have seen a few dinosaurs. Said Luffy looking at the T-Rex Zoro had just cut down. Sounds like you're on Little Garden. You might want to get what you need from there and leave. For it takes the log pose a year to rest there. Said Ace as he was sailing from the New World back to the Grand Line. Nami's face paled at hearing this. This isn't good. Sanji. She yelled. Yes, my Nami Swan. Called Sanji as he knelt before her. You and Zoro go and do some hunting while the rest of us go and gather fruits and veggies and water. Said Nami as she looked over at Luffy who just nodded his head to this. Luffy makes several Sela shadow clones they grab baskets and ran off as Naruto follows suit making several shadow clones as well. But isn't as skilled as Luffy as he calls out the Jutsu. What's that Luffy? Asked Ace as he heard Naruto call out the Jutsu. That is my newest crewmate Naruto Uzumaki, he is a shinobi for the end we found standing in the middle of the East Blue. Said Luffy as he looked down at his snail. The little snail frowned at hearing this as it mirrored Ace's facial expressions. Just be careful Luffy. Mom has told us not to trust people from the end too easily. He told his little brother. I know Ace. But he let the end for his family throw him away and just went thought to much bullshit. Also I trust him even though I know he is hiding some things from me. But everyone is entitled to their secrets like how we are. Said Luffy with a small smirk on his face as his hand moved to his belly. Yeah, I know Lou. When I met up with you, I'll be checking your seals. Said Ace as he was more worried than ever. Yeah. That is fine. Mom's friend that used to come and see me for my seal has passed away before the begin of the war in the end, and what I gathered from Naruto that war was over the tailed beast. Said Luffy looking over the forest that was next to the ship. Ace grew quiet at hearing that part. That isn't good Luffy. I guess. It was best we never went to visit mom before your 17th birthday like we once talked about. He said with a small frown. Yeah, I guess so. But Ace call me when you're in the Grand Line and I'll tell you where we are at. For I have a feeling we'll be seeing Sabo and mom soon said Luffy. Yeah, we'll be seeing them soon. Bye Lou. Said Ace as he was now worried if anyone finds out Luffy's secret, it wouldn't end well for a lot of people. Naruto looked at Luffy once more when he heard about seals once more. Why are they worried about his seals on him? He questioned no one. I don't know Kit. There is something very odd about your captain. I guess all we can do is wait and see and find out what kind of seals this boy has. Said Kurama as Naruto just nods his head as Luffy watches Naruto out of the corner of eye as her arches a brow. I think he might be catching on to me if that other chakra I am feeling in him is what I think it is. Thought Luffy as he resealed his snail and let out a sigh as he thought about calling Sabo to find out where he was. With that thought he unseals Sabo's snail and calls up his brother. Luffy looks down at his snail as it rings. With Sabo. Sabo pulls off his top hat grinning. It looks like Lou is calling. He called out as Tsunade looked up from her cards as she was sitting on deck across from her son. Well answer it. Said Cola as she looked over at Sabo as she was helping Makino onto the ship. Hey little brother. Said Sabo with a grin. Hey Sabo. Where are you at? Asked Luffy as he wanted to know. Oh no we're just picking up Shank's girlfriend for the lazy ass, couldn't come himself always to the East Blue to pick up Makino himself. Said Sabo with a grin as Makino blushed looking over at Sabo who grinned at her. So you already have mom? Asked Luffy as he spaced out on the part on his brother picking up Makino for a second. Yeah, I have mom, sis and another girl that tagged along with them. Said Sabo. Who's the girl and tell Makino hi for me and I can't wait to see her. Said Luffy as he now grinned. Hi Luffy. Called Makino as sat down with Shizune as she joined the card game. Her name is Shikamarinara. Said Sabo. Shit. Said Naruto as he fell off the top railing onto the lower deck. Luffy just arched a brow looking at his new crewmember. Are you alright Naruto? Asked Luffy. Nami stood over Naruto looking at him. I thought you were graceful than that. She said laughing at him. Shut up. Said Naruto blushing. He is alive. Said Shikamaru as she narrows her eyes at the snail in Sabo's hands. Well looks like your crewmember is in trouble. Said Sabo with a grin. 
that you ran out on your girlfriend or something? Asked Luffy looking at Naruto. No no, it isn't like that. Shika is my best friend and I didn't tell no one when I left the village. Said Naruto looking away. I see. Said Luffy as he grinned. Well mom. You know he is alive and well. So are you going to be kicking his ass like you have told me you've done in the past? Asked Luffy as he kept his eyes locked with Naruto. Naruto's eyes widen as he only knows of one woman that would whip his ass and get away with it. I don't know Luffy-chan. I have my baby boy to deal with when I see him. Said Tsunade. Oh mom. I have been good. Whined Luffy as he grinned once more. I'm just kicking a warlord's ass. That's all and hey mom I got to go. One of my clones just met Mr. Three and Miss Golden Week. Said Luffy. Okay sweetie. We'll call once we are in the grand line. Said Tsunade as there was a click. With Luffy. We got to move. They are going to make trouble for the giants living on this island. Said Luffy standing up. Naruto nodded his head as they jumped off the ship leaving Nami and Yusuf to protect the ship alone. Chapter 6. As Luffy and Naruto raced towards the giants and the two broke works agents. Naruto looked over at his new captain. Hey Luffy. Called Naruto as they both jumped over a T-Rex that tried to bite them as they jumped over it. Yeah Naruto. Asked Luffy as he tilted his head to the right as they both came into a clearing with a strange spinning candle cake with a pumpkin on top of it as a both giants bodies slowly began to cover in wax. Is Tsunade Bach and your mother? Questioned Naruto as he jumped out of the way of the snot bomb. Luffy chuckled. Yeah, that's my mom. Why? He questioned as he pulled out a kunai to block the snot bomb coming his way. But Tsunade and the others. Tsunade sat on the rail of the ship as she heard a ringing coming from the seal on her wrist. Purr 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 purr. Tsunade frowned at the seal and unsealed the little den den. Hello. She said with an annoyed tone in her voice. Hello, Tsunade Sama. Said Kakashi. What do you need brat? I am retired. Growled out Tsunade as she wasn't in the mood for this little baby calling her. I'm only calling as you are the closest to what just happened. Said Kakashi with worry in his voice. Tsunade flurried her brow. What do you mean that I am the closest to what happened? She questioned as now Sabo was standing next to his mother as he heard her talking to someone. Ino was on a mission in the land of Wave, well there she was kidnapped by some pirates, no one can get to her in time to save her said Kakashi with a frown marring the snail's face. Do you even know who took the girl? Questioned Tsunade with a tick mark on her forehead. Black cat pirates. Said Kakashi. Sabo frowned. I thought Luffy took that crew down for good. He said looking at his mother. Tsunade frowned at this. We'll find her and take care of those bastards for good. She said with annoyance in her tone. Thank you Tsunade Sama. Said Kakashi with an eye smile. But Kakashi brat. I will not be returning Ino right away. I'll have to send her back though slug or something. For we have an appointment to keep. Said Tsunade with annoyance. Oh I'll put her on a vacation until she is ready to return. Said Kakashi as he didn't know what to say his former hokage. Tsunade smirked as she hung up on the fool as she didn't want to deal with him. Little garden. Luffy unsealed his two short swords. A dark grin crossed his lips. Be ready to teach these fools a lesson cub. Question a dark voice deep within Luffy. Black and blue chakra surround the two short swords in his hands. Who's next? Question Luffy as he sliced the snot bomb coming his way. Mr. Five grinned. Nice little trick little boy. But you don't he didn't get to finish what he was saying as Luffy appeared behind him with a slash to the man's unprotected back. Mr. Five fell to the ground with blood sliding down his parted lips. Miss. Valentine's Day's eyes widen. No she gasped as she jumped into the air. One kilogram. She called out as she began floating in the air. Luffy grinned. You can't get away from me miss. Valentine's Day. He said his swords vanished in the seals on his wrist and began going though the hand signs. Wind Blade Jutsu. Called out Luffy as blades of wind cuts down the blonde hair woman. The woman fell to the ground with cuts on her side. With shallow cuts all over her body. Luffy walked over to her slowly. I'm sorry miss. You live. But just run away and hide from your boss. He will be going down soon. He said as miss. Valentine Day opened her eyes looking up at him. Where would I go? I have no one or anywhere to go. She said with tears in the corner of her eyes. Luffy knelt down next to her as a kind smile now was on his. Well you could always join my crew. He told her as he offered his hand towards her. Naruto watched out of the corner of his eye as he was jumping out of the way of Mr. Three's attack. This. Golden Week stood back with fear in her eyes. As she didn't know how to handle these two strange pirates attacks. She had lost her paints in the strange raven hair boy's water attack that broke all her paint spells on everyone around them. This. Valentine's Day looked at the kind eyes that once was dark and ready for battle. I'll only join if you take the girl as well. She told him. Luffy grinned. Sure. 
He stood up and walked over to the frightened little girl. Hey. He told Miss. Golden Week. Hi. Said Miss Golden Week. Would you like to join my crew along with Miss Valentine's Day? Questioned Luffy with a soft and gentle smile on his face. Naruto drops down from the sky with an axe kick, knocking out Mr. Three. Well that is done. He told himself. Git. Did you feel that dark energy that came from your captain? Questioned Kurama as he looked out his open cage. No I didn't. Said Naruto with annoyance in his tone. We'll have to find out what the hell is going on with your captain. Even if we have to ask the old hag to see if she will open up about what seal within him. Said Kurama. Black cat pirates. Goro smirks at the blonde hair girl before him. You will get me a nice little price at one of the slave markets. He said as he watches Eno thrash around with chains holding her to a wall. Captain. Can we play with her? Questions one of the random pirates on his crew. Goro's eyes flash darkly as he backhands the man. If anyone touches her it will be me. But if she is a virgin, she will get me a better price in market. He told the now bleeding fool on the floor. Eno glares at him. You will not touch me. She hisses out at the man. Ahaha don't worry my dear. You will only be sold. I will not touch you. Said Kuro with a sickening grin on his face. What if Devil Fruit Naruto joins Luffy Harem and thanks for watching my video till the end if you enjoy this content then do consider subscribing to my channel and leave a like if you guys need the next part, comment down and thanks for watching the video and see you guys in the next video.